Hey everyone, thanks for stopping on Pete's Garage. Yeah, I'm coming to you from Lancaster, New York, which is just outside of Buffalo, where we did have, indeed, seven feet of snow, and it was every bit of seven feet. So we had a lot of fun here. I had a hard time getting out of the shop, but who cares about that? I spent a lot of time working. But I want to share something with you right now that I think I take advantage of because I use it a lot, but it's something that can help you set your work apart from other people's work or make your project look a lot better. And I talk about coating materials, coating metals, or, or coating uh, different parts for your engine and your car. And there's a lot of ways to do it. And when you talk about coating something, you really have a few options. You could paint it, which is probably the cheapest. You could powder coat it. I've done videos on powder coating, and that's a little more expensive, a little more time consuming, but it requires additional equipment and it can get expensive. Uh, you could also send it out for chrome plating, which is very expensive. You want to chrome plate something. Or you could do something that I use a lot, and it's electroplating something. Electroplating is a very simple process. And I use the, uh, the Eastwood electroplating system. Uh, I use a lot of their products because for the average hobbyist, serious hobbyist, whether you're starting out or you're a serious hobbyist, Eastwood makes a lot of great products. Now, I don't, I don't, uh, I'm not endorsed by them. They don't pay me, but I share their products because I, I think they're good. They work well, and I've never had a problem with them, so I use them a lot. Uh, and the one thing I use is the Eastwood electroplating system, and it's a very simple, uh, very inexpensive system that allows you to tin zinc plate all kinds of metal parts. Now, it doesn't work on cast iron or aluminum, but it works great on steel parts, uh, brass parts, you know, those the things that you want to make look nice so they're shiny but not exactly chrome so what I'm gonna do is this I got a couple things here I'm working on my back working on my Cobra engine. and I want to get that done because everybody keeps ask, asking about when am I gonna get that Cobra finished I have a little time here before I start working on a 66 Corvette and I want to uh, get, get some work done on my Cobra so what I have here is I have a bracket and this is the bracket for the fuel pump the fuel pump gets mounted here and this, this is how you mount the fuel pump so I have a little bracket and I have a standoff and the standoff goes right to the uh, to the fuel pump and this just holds the, the fuel pump up. Now, they're both steel. One of them is already uh, zinc plated, tin zinc plated. The other one is just plain steel. But I want them to look both the same. So what I'm going to do is real quick is show you how to take a small piece of metal or material, clean it, plate it with uh, tin zinc plating, how that process works, and then what they look like before and after. So you can get an idea, hey, maybe I'd like to try this process. So let me explain to you the equipment, how the process works, and we'll go through it. It's really pretty simple. So what you need to plate, zinc plate, tin zinc plate apart, is you need something, some very basic things. You need a container to put the electrolyte, and this is what, where the plating will actually take place inside this, this cup, which is a paint mix cup. You need, you need a, a place to do the plating. You need the electrolyte solution, and, and uh, Eastwood cells, this comes with this kit. It's an electrolyte solution, it's, an, it's a mild acid, and this acts as a conductor for the, the zinc as it goes through the electroplating process. And you need a power supply. Now the, the Eastwood power supply, all you need are two D-sized batteries, three volts are all you really need. Uh, but I do a lot of plating on a lot of different things. I, I do uh, anodizing, aluminum anodizing, and all different kinds of coatings. So I have a different kind of thing. I have a, a power supply, and it's a switching power supply. I can go from 1 to 15 volts and 1 to 25 amps, and I can choose how I want to do this. I can either control the voltage or I control, can control my current. And that those are important when you're doing plating. So I have a very expensive power supply here. It's a few hundred dollars, but I use it a lot. So, uh, let me set this up, and I'll show you how this is going to work. But basically, what happens is this. You take your part, you put your acid in a cup. The acid sits in the cup. Then you take your zinc, tin zinc uh, plate, and it's a sacrificial piece. And what that means is, as it sits in the acid material, this material dissolves, and it comes off of the, the uh, rod, or the, this is the, the uh, tin zinc, and then it... it electrically adheres to your surface that you want to plate okay and you would just simply sit this in there you put your part there and then the the zinc transfers from one it, it dissolves here and it go, ends up on the part and the zinc is sacrificial and what sacrificial means is that as this process goes on the zinc and this is one of my used zinc zinc rods here you can see how it's it eats away so as this is sitting in the acid 
the material starts to dissolve, and as it dissolves, obviously it disappears. It's sacrificial. That's what. Ha that's how it works. Let me set this up. We'll plate these parts, and I'll show you what they look like after. Okay, now my part is ready to plate. I have it bead blasted, cleaned, and like any coating that you're going to put on something, the, the base material has to be completely grease and oil free, and I didn't touch it with my fingers to make sure that it didn't get any grease on it. I have a piece of stainless steel wire on it to make sure that I have a good connection to my ground. I have my positive hooked up to my, my zinc, my zinc uh, plate. Now I'm going to lower the cinder, you'll see the numbers go a little bit crazy. But they'll settle down. Make sure that the part's in the middle so it gets evenly coated. And I have my volts set at three. I'll move this wire out of the way so you can see. My volts are set at three. And with constant voltage. There we go. Get this out of the way. I want you to be able to see what's going on here. With constant voltage my amperage is going to change because as the coating or as the zinc moves onto the part it's going to act as an insulator and simple Ohm's law volts equals amps times resistance as resistance goes up amperage is going to fall to zero with constant voltage so if we were to stand here and you watch to see the, vo the amperage is falling that means that the zinc is moving from the sacrificial material to the part creating an insulating barrier so less current will flow. I'll let this cook for a little bit and we'll come back and see what it looks like when I take it out. So now you can see my amperage have dropped down to about 1.8 and it's staying there which means the part's not going to get much more coating on it. It's remaining constant. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull my part out as I pull it out. You'll see that it has a very uh, light gray coating on it and that is the there's their zinc tin plate right on there right now. So let me clean this up and I'll do the other part and then we'll continue on show you how to finish it up and, how, and I'll show you the before and after. You can be the judge if you like how well this works. The parts come out of the uh, solution dull gray in color but a couple seconds buffing them up will take that right off and make them start to shine. See, it doesn't take long to go from the dull gray to a shine. So I'll finish polishing both parts and I'll show you what they look like when they're done. So there you have electroplating using tin zinc and then polishing the metal. I'm going to show you a couple before and after photos and then a photo of the parts installed so you can see what it looks like. Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage.